Hello, it's Angie Cartwright here with Grief the Unspoken and National Grief Awareness Day. Uh, today I thought I'd go ahead and uh, sit and talk with you a little bit. I've had a lot of requests uh, for my uh, story. You know, you guys sometimes hear it in bits and pieces and um, I'm going to try to briefly tell you a little bit about myself, how I got here to this point, uh, about National Grief Awareness Day, the importance of it, and uh, my hopes for the future, uh, for the grieving community, uh, for grief itself. Um, and uh, so here we go. Um, I think you guys uh, know my story as far as when my mother passed away. Um, that's how you guys caught me uh, back in November, or a little bit after November 2010. Uh, one morning, you know, you get that you get that call or you have someone come to your door. And I had someone come to my door and tell me that my mom had been found. Uh, she had had an accidental overdose. And here we are back in grief for me. I had been grieving since about the age of five. I found my sister who was 11 months old, passed away. I had to wake up my mother and let her know that my sister didn't look right. And that, and that was really the beginning of a lot of years of loss. And a lot of years of living two different lives. A lot of years of trying to cope with grief by myself. We all know about the isolation, the taboo subject needing to be better overnight. All the cliches you guys hear us talk about all the time, those things were happening on an everyday basis. Nobody knew what to do with me. You move up to um, uh, the age of 14, my uncle, one of my favorite uncles had committed suicide. I watched my family tell my mother and she dropped to her knees. Um, I lived in alcoholism, was raised in alcoholism and drug addiction. And uh, for you, those that, that don't know that, I have found that uh, we grieve in those kinds of losses too, loss of security, loss of trust. Uh, we lived in foster care. Um, and in 1996, I was a young married wife. Um, and uh, my husband and I had been in a severe car wreck and uh, he didn't make it. And so by that time, uh, and let me back up, Right before that, my grandfather had been found. Um, they said it was suicide. Uh, the family thinks that maybe something else happened to him, that maybe he, he was murdered. So after my husband passed away, I just really tipped over into isolation. I used alcohol. I used um, anything to get me out of that moment, um, out of that pain. Um, in 2003, I started to uh, start my story of healing, uh, started to claim uh, my life again, started to reinvent who I was, because as we all know, every, every death you experience, I think a part of you leaves with that person. Well, here we are, you know, we're, we, we've, we've experienced a loss to us, no matter what, it is completely traumatic. It doesn't matter how, who, why, how long you've known them. It's traumatic and, and our hearts are broken. And how do you return back to life after something like that? So you go on the best that you can. And so let's speed it up to 2010. I, you know, that you get, I got that message the morning that my mom had passed away. We go to the funeral um, and we try to, you know, do the last thing we can do for our family, which is give them a beautiful ceremony. And then you go home. Calls stop coming. The food maybe stops coming. And the door shut. And you're broken. And at that point in my life, what I was really, I was really angry. And I remember saying actually to God, and what the hell do you want from me? What do you want from me? You, you've given me all this death. Everything I've ever done, you take it from me. That's just how I felt at the moment. I wasn't bathing. I wasn't eating. And I was tired of having to live up to society's standards of what people think, how they think I should be, how they think I should feel. Never validating uh, my pain instead of telling me you know you shouldn't feel this way she wouldn't want you to be sad you know, all those things 
Now that sounds like a lot of self-pity, but it's not. That's what you call grief. I was in severe grief, and I was scared, and I was tired, I was lonely, and I was having a hard time uh, looking to the future for any kind of purpose. So, you know, chains of circumstances happen, and I end up on Facebook, and I started a little tiny group. It started out with about 50 people. What started out with 50 people is now thousands of people, 17 groups later. A huge page with, with tons of people that follow us every day. And now a National Grief Awareness Day. And what I have come to know is that we have not changed a lot from 1996 till now. Every day, a grieving mother is told she needs to move on with her life. Every day. Our grievers are still going into therapist's offices and they're telling them that they need to let go of their loved ones. So the griever leaves distraught. How do you let go of something that is a part of you? They tell you not to live in the past when that's where my past is, my mother, my memories, my sweet moments. Every moment is back in the past. Why can't I go back there and visit? Why can't I talk about that? So what I did is I was a little bit of an angry woman, as you could probably tell and hear, and I was tired of it. But I knew that it was my responsibility to take care of me. And uh, there was a day that came that said, you know what, Angie? No one's going to fight for you. For some reason, this is my life. What can I do about it? So I started talking to you guys every day. And we talked each other's language. And every day I got a little bit stronger. I started doing some grief work of my own. And I started seeing thousands and thousands and thousands of people that were experiencing the same thing, living in isolation. You see them every day. They're in your grocery store. They're at your church. They might be in your therapist's office. You may be a therapist sitting there not knowing what to do with these grievers. You know, you've given the tools that they've given you. I think we're really on the edge of change. As currently now, I know lots of educators, thank God for them. Change is happening um, as we speak. But we need lots of help. When you're grieving, you don't want to come up like I am and talk on a video about what it's really like to grieve. I mean, you, you're distraught, you're destroyed, you're trying to hang on. Grief is not overnight. I have found that I can love my mother and visit my memories and she's a part of me. I have found that I don't have to let go of anything except the fear, hate, guilt, shame, the stuff that cuts me off from remembering her. I have found that, that when, I, when I let you know that, you know what, I'm having a mom day. I'm grieving pretty bad. I just can't make it. That I can't, re I can't worry about how you take that. My healing depends on it. My healing depends on my honesty. My healing depends on who I am and what I am. And if I can find my truth. And you know, today I have. I found my truth. You know, I have been in grief. My heart's been broken. I know there's hope. I'm in the middle of healing right now. But there are millions of us that are not. We need to get grief out of the dark and into the light and make it an everyday talk. You know? August 30th, 2013 is Grief Awareness Day. Happens to be my mother's birthday. She was a grieving mother and lived in isolation most of her life. No one understood her, not even me. I myself told her the same cliches, not knowing what to do. See, this isn't about tearing somebody up for what they're saying. It's all they got. Ask yourself, how many times you passed on something to somebody because you didn't know what to do. So let's reteach it. I don't want another mother living like my mom has. I watched her run out of our home from the age of five years old for someone to save her baby. She cried a lot of nights by herself. My closed groups are for you. That's what they're for. It's okay to be sad. It really is. 
it's okay to feel those things even though it can be really scary so here I am I lived a life of grief I think I lost my mom more when she was living than I did when she passed I honor her today and I honor you my friend if you're grieving it's okay share our stuff let's re-educate you know it's kind of sad we have to do that but I think about my child or my friend when they lose somebody what they have to live through after because we lose a person we bury them and that's only a few moments but then we have to keep moving on and your heart stands still let's go back and visit those people and allow them to be broken allow them their hair a mess their house a mess allow them to just be the more we can talk about it the more freer we'll get so I need your help what I need you to do is share this video share our website grief national grief awareness day help us to educate people share your story and on August 30th we want you to take some kind of butterfly in any way you draw it on your wrist you take a picture of it you send it on Facebook you can make pins and wear them on your shirt you can make huge signs if you're an educator it's time to come out of the dark thank you everyone for supporting me so far we're just getting started but it takes all of us to help those who live in the dark god bless